graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Is Pro- well, let's look that up because I don't think that's <laughs> let's true. Look the- Where are you looking it up? In the New England Journal of Medicine? Is this with children? In Grey's Anatomy? What? Some fucking website. Yeah, we're talking about young like, people. The, they boys, go down this. Re- they, they're lost. They're just lost. With, with children. Because there's so much the information. Well, no, right? we're totally <laughs> There's so much well, information. And so poor Joe Rogan, yeah, his, his brain's just <laughs> melting with all this information. He can't dissect it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Joe, if you want to be an expert on this subject, stop doing your daily dumb show where you talk to fucking whoever, some. Dick comedian is, is, you know, talking about whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a, something there. Wait, who's Ted, he talking to? Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent about hunting <laughs> and goggles and everything, and eating meat. Stop your show. Go enroll at Austin University Medical <laughs> fucking University, right? And Can become a doctor. Become, learn. Come out, like, spend eight years. Spend eight years! <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Learning about the body and how everything works in biology and chemistry. And people are applauding me. This is I'm gonna have to run for governor. <laughs> they keep 12 to 17 more like the bill. Learn, stop looking at your website. Put your websites away. Close your tabs, Joe. Per million <laughs> Close your tabs. <laughs> He's looking at numbers <laughs> in, in the same fucking, time. But where's that from? Second right? dose of five, Pfizer. Pfizer. Yeah, so you're about eight times likely to get. And this my poor guy is sitting there going, like, "Well, I want to sell me books, but I can't. This is devising." This is the bison. Now that means we're talking to this idiot. Read before, this guy's been hitting the head too many like, times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think this guy's this got brain damage. damage. Like, what are we getting this from? Is this from well, the VAERS report? But even Just Joe! Joe, 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 pause! Joe! Joe! You made a lot of money on the Spotify deal, baby. Okay? You made a tremendous amount. Take a sabbatical. You know what a sabbatical is? Take a little time off. Go enroll in Austin University's School of Science and Medicine. Get your degree. Then come on and tell me what the fuck is up with these conditions and research and everything. Until you do, go fuck yourself. Shut the fuck up. Go fuck <laughs> you. Stick your bald head up your own ass. Straight white men are not allowed to talk. Jesus Christ. Stay the fuck at home. Your podcast will fail. Yeah, it's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy who makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com, and you're listening to the Two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Glow and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And Paul, we take forever in between each episode, but we sit. It's Chris's fault. It's not my fault. We sit at the brink of World War Three. As a, as we're recording this, it's literally uh, well, what's the twenty third? Mm-hmm. We, we skipped two two Tuesday, uh, two 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 twenty two twenty two Taco Tuesday, which I did actually. I did end up going to Taco Bell and getting some tacos. I'm I'm broke as a fucking joke, but I said, you know what, I'm gonna go out on Two Two Tuesday and uh, get some tacos. But yeah, as we're recording this, uh, at least you know, I mean, you're listening to the news. I avoid the news at all, but I did look up on Twitter and they're like, uh, unexplained explosions are are being heard around the Ukraine. So um, a lot of things are, are pointing at that this is going to be. The beginning of World War Three, and I, it's it's sort of that weird like history repeating itself, like pandemic and uh, you know financial, you know being wobbling on the brink of financial ruin, and now here comes World War Three. But you know they always say that uh, war is good for the economy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's 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 and it reminds me of a, a joke. It was Bobcat Goldthwait. He says, "Yeah, war is good for the economy because a dead guy can't flip a hamburger," uh, but you know, it it does. You know, it makes me want to you know point my fingers at all the people that supported Trump and you know that you know that Trump was very likely a Russian asset and you know I think they were trying to destabilize uh, the United States and then uh, you know now this shit happens. You know he's he's out of office. 
you know, well, no, excuse me, he's been out of office. I tell you, the time goes in such a weird pattern. Uh, you know, no, he's been out of office for over a year now, but now Russia's starting shit with fucking Ukraine, and they were always starting shit with Ukraine. That's always been a thing that's been going on, and I guess now they're finally, uh, it's finally the straw that broke the camel's back as we, as we sit on the brink of World War Three, mm-hmm. and if we have to get involved, uh, and it's just, you know, just, you know, for a guy that wasn't, you know, the, the leader that was in the KGB and all this other stuff probably has tons of fucking, uh, shit on, on, on Donald Trump and God knows, you know, what, uh, assets he still, he has in the United States. But, you know, it's, you know, I'm still looking for a job. So. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, you know, as, as the, as the world slowly goes to hell, I'm still on the job search. And, uh, I've been slowly uploading older episodes of the podcast i know i'm all over the place i have a bunch of weird notes on on my screen uh but yeah i've been i've been doing the job search and after after a while you know you you fill in a, you fill out a bunch of applications online and, and it, it's so frustrating because you go and you they ask you to upload your resume but then even though you upload your resume you still have to like fill out all the you know like why even ask the upload your resume if you still have to fill out the same shit on their site um so I've been doing that, uh, looking for a job. And, uh, and my main source, cause I hear a lot of horror stories from like others, you know, other sites, but, and not that Indeed is the best. It's certainly not the best. Uh, but I've been, I've been primarily looking up for jobs on, on Indeed. How they operate, you know, I've been trying to look for remote jobs because being the man that I am, you know, being a, a single father, you know, with my, you know, with my daughter, with my daughter's mom gone. You know, I have no actual real help with anyone raising my daughter. So I'm looking for a job where I can be home while my daughter goes to school. You know, I've been on furlough since April of 2020 and, uh, you know, unemployment dried up and, 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 you know, trying to make money other ways. You know, I, w- I was selling my plasma and I don't know if I ever, I, I, I don't have, had I mentioned that in other pat- podcasts, other episodes where, you know, I, I was donating my plasma and, uh, but they got this thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I you know, don't know about you. You know, the, you know, you donate the plasma, and they, you know, they hook you up to a machine, and you know, well, the machine draws the blood out of your your arm. So, so Chris is basically slowly killing himself. But continue. No, but let me, but let me tell you, I swear to God, because um, when they hook you up to the machine, you know, it draws your blood out, then it goes through like a filter or whatever the hell it does, and it separates the red blood cells from the plasma, and then they shoot the red blood cells back into your arm. It's a big frickin' needle. The needle that goes in your arm, I think it's a 14 gauge for anybody who knows, you know, needles or like back when like piercing was a real, you know, piercing was a thing. You know, I remember people getting like 14 gauge. It's a big, it's a big fucking needle. And, uh, so recently, now I'm fucked recently because, uh, they fucked up my arm. <laughs> the, the, the phlebotomist fucked up my arm. So I can't go back for eight weeks because they feel like, oh, if, 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 the, <laughs> if things get interrupted in the middle of your, of your, of your transaction, and the red blood cells don't get put back in your body. You need eight weeks to replenish those red blood cells. And now that being said, um, you know, I bet I, I had a, I, you know, the phlebotomist fucked up my arm and now I can't go back. So now I really don't have any fucking income, uh, coming in. You know, my car's still fucked up because, you know, we're in the middle of the winter and, and I've been having issues with my car anyway. But, um, so they, uh, they, 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 they fucked up my arm. But, okay, before the, <laughs> before they fucked up my arm, you know, when you, when they set you up for the machine, they, they hook you up to an IV. So you get the IV back, you know, like you, you get back your red blood cells and they give you an IV. So it's almost like, okay, yeah, you're donating plasma, but you're getting like an IV. And anybody, you know, like there's some, there's a big, uh, like people that are famous and, and like, I mean, well, I'll bring him up in a second, you know, Joe Rogan and, uh, not Dave Chappelle, but the people that hang out with Dave Chappelle, um, they do this thing where, like, if you know, if you go out and you party, you drink all night, you get drunk and you get smashed or whatever. Um, if the next day when you're like recovering, if they hook you up to an IV bag, you know, your body will get the stuff that you would get back if you were drinking a Gatorade or whatever the case may be. So, like, I know you say like it kills yourself, but actually, I felt great after <laughs> donating plasma. You know, like, not that it feels great, but you know, you kind of, um, you know, you kind of maybe because they're giving you. You're, you're replenishing your fluids or whatever. They put you a hook up to an IV bag. You don't feel that. You don't feel bad afterwards. I, I thought, it, I thought donating plasma, you feel like, you know, you feel like garbage and real sluggish and lethargic and you don't. And then like part of the whole process is they keep track of like your protein and they keep track of your plasma 
and uh, you certainly, and, and I'll tell you this right now, if anybody ever decides to donate plasma, you certainly make sure you're fucking hydrated. Because if you're dehyd, if you try to donate and you're dehydrated, that shit fucking hurts. So you know, you keep yourself hydrated. You know, they they stick you in a machine, and they stick a machine that you know you take an IV in your arm part of the way. So it wasn't a bad thing. The only thing is that, well, no, here's the thing that sucks is they uh, they closed down one of the one they closed. Uh, you know, for people who know Rochester, you know, the, the you know, the, I go to one, I, I go to one of the, the plasma donation centers and they closed another one in one of the nearby neighborhoods. So when they closed down to one of one of the nearby neighborhoods, that means all the people who were going to that one are now going to the one I usually go to. And now there's like double the fucking people. So a usual de- donation goes for like an hour and a half or so, where, you know, you go and you wait online and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you listen to a podcast, you, you play Wordle. And then, you know, you donate and you're out the door. And for me, because I'm a bigger guy, I would get like 55 bucks. Uh, you know, people that weigh under a certain amount only get 45. But now, with the other place closing, now we're double, now you're getting out, now it takes you like three hours to fucking donate plasma. And, uh, when you, when you think, you're like, shit, I've been in this place for three hours for $55, you're starting to do the math like, shit, I should fucking just go get a job flipping fucking burgers because you know for the time i'm, I'm sitting now, of course you're not really doing anything you're standing in line and then you're laying in a in a like an inclined chair like you know you know you're not doing anything and you can only go twice a week uh but you know when you have absolutely no income whatsoever um it's uh you know 110 dollars a week isn't bad but the other thing that sucks is that they put they when you get paid they give you they give it to you on a fucking like a bullshit uh uh atm card and think about it. If you get 55 bucks, you if you go to an ATM machine, you can only get 40 of that money out because the ATM machine doesn't give out, for, you know, five dollar increments or ten dollar increments. So you have to go twice, and even then you get 110. So that's that's how they fuck you. That's how they nickel and dime you. You know, they they uh they you know they they give you the money, but it's not really your money. So you have to keep coming back to for those all those little increments to add up so you could get another twenty dollars. So it's a, I'm pretty sure there's some bean counter out there that figured all this shit out and you know make you make people keep coming back but once again when you have absolutely no other source of income um you know your your donating plasma doesn't seem like a bad idea um but once again i said i've been doing uh doing the job search on indeed and these guys so what they'll do is you know indeed you set it up where you know every day you'll get uh an email like you know here's jobs that fit your description here's you know here's jobs that match the searches that you've been doing and they go and they send me a list and let's just say, you know, they send an email with like 10 jobs and I'll open the links for all of them. You know, <laughs> you know, I got like 10 links, 10 tabs in my browser open. And then I'm reading the descriptions. And of course, you know, you apply to so many places that you kind of lose track of who you apply to in the class or, or even you might apply to the same company, for, but different positions. And once again, I'm looking for a remote job. I'm looking for something I can work from at home so I can be a fucking be here at home for my daughter. So my daughter doesn't become a fucking statistic because, you know, I don't want to leave her, you know, to fucking to the streets, <laughs> you know. And um, so, you know, you, you recognize all these companies and like, oh, maybe it's a different position. And then you click the button and then Indeed says, oh, you've already applied for this job. I'm like, well, then why the f- if I applied for this job, why the fuck are you sending me the link? The exact same job if, if, you know, so it's like, I guess they custom it, they custom tailor it, but not that much. And, and once again, I guess it is free, but then again, like, you know, Indeed makes money the way all these other sites make money. They collect all your fucking information. I mean, you upload your resume to them, you know, they see what you're looking for and, and they see their demographic and shit like that. So they have tons of information. They, they have your email address. They have all your contact information. Cause obviously if you're looking for a job, you're giving these people, you know, all your fucking information. And it's a great way to fucking source, um, you know, info from people, you know, the same way Facebook and, and shit like that does. So, or Google. So, you know, it's just been frustrating because, you know, you, 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 you do a couple of applications a day. And, you know, and of course, I mean, yeah, I could try to do more, but, you know, I, I've, you know, anybody who's been listening to this show and, you know, we'll be hitting 10 years in April of doing Two Strangers One podcast. And, uh, you know, I've done the retail jobs. I've done the security jobs. I've done the one, th- I, the one thing I haven't done in, a, in the conversation we'll have before the podcast, I've never worked in food service. Not that I want to, you know, but I know that's the, uh, that's another shitty industry that like everybody, you know, everybody has that one experience where they work that, uh, except me. I'm like one person who hasn't worked in food service. Um, 
where you know you know it's those entry level jobs that there's a fucking revolving door there's so much turnover because you know people come in and there's such a there's a lot of work and they they work you to death and they don't want to pay you that much and all this other bullshit and so uh it's frustrating you know so i don't i don't want to do those jobs i want to do a remote job and uh you know and it's just the way things are going i'm like you know it's it's like it's frustrating but hopefully you know my old job uh will hire me back soon or you know and I, I've spoken to my old boss, and he wants to hire me back because just you know his clients aren't paying their bills. You know that you know he built he's billing out people, and they're not uh, they're not paying they're not paying for services that were already rendered. And uh, you know he, he has he has he still has employees on the side that he can't hire back because these people don't want to pay the bills. But then again, you know it's also we're in a fucking we're, I mean we're still in the end tail of a, of a pandemic, but people don't want to fucking you know, people aren't going to the doctor or people are dying. And, you know what I'm saying? How many, you know, we've lost hundreds of thousands of people that, you know, maybe people aren't going to the doctor and, and you know, whole industries have been affected. And so, you know, I'm wanting to go back to work, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, and then, so, I'll, okay, so once again, I brought up Joe Rogan. And uh, since the last episode, you know, we've had a lot of uh, details coming up in uh, in the Joe Rogan saga where you know and 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 i'm certainly not a a big time joe rogan listener i mean i i listen enough and i i don't when he has like the scientists and shit like that i don't listen to those episodes he 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 interviews a lot of comedians a lot of comedians that i like so you know i I listen to those episodes you know i i subscribe to him on spotify and you know when spotify gives you that yearly rundown thing where it's like oh uh you know, you've listened to your favorite podcast is the Joe Rogan. Well, cause that's the only fucking podcast I listen to on Spotify because it's, you know, it's the, it's the only venue where you can get them. I mean, I guess technically you, you could watch them on YouTube on the clips and shit like that. But, um, you know, I, I, do I listen to the show? Yes. I mean, I haven't listened recently, but even besides all the misinformation that he's being accused of, and, and I certainly, I certainly stand there with the accusers saying he's giving up misinformation. You know, it's like he would turn every conversation back into fucking COVID. A comedian will be making a joke, you know, and oh yeah, you know. But what about the restrictions, you know? And like, dude, you know, get the, you know, and and I and I can only imagine the episodes where he's talking to his supposed experts and doctors and all this shit. And you know, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous platform because yes, he's influential, and I don't think he understands that there's people who only get their information from him. You know, like I said earlier, you know, right now we're watching, you're watching the news, you were hearing, seeing the beginning of fucking World War Three, and I'm not watching the news. You know, I'll probably get, you know, I'll probably get my news from fucking Stephen Colbert and, and, and Seth Meyers, you know, and that's, and, and of course, you know, but there's people on the flip side who only get their news from Joe Rogan and, you know, they're getting his skewed view. And of course, someone people could easily say, you know, if you're only listening to Stephen Colbert and, and Seth Meyers, you know, you're going to be skewed also. But, um, you know, I understand that my, my views may be skewed. There's people who listen to Joe Rogan and, and take him for gospel. And, 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 oh, why can't I ask these questions? And yes, you're, you're, you're absolutely right to ask the questions, but, you know, you're, ob- the guests that you're choosing to put on the show, you're, you're showing an obvious fucking bias. And, uh, you know, it just gets frustrating. And then once again, I just got sick and said, like, you know, dude, just, just talk to fucking, you know, talk to comedians about funny shit. You know, okay, you bring up the MMA nonsense, fine. That's, you know, that's your thing. I get it. If you want to talk about fucking doing psychedelic drugs and fucking going into a, a sensory deprivation tank, I, I get that. But, you know, Jesus Christ, he, he turns every fucking conversation back to fucking COVID. And it's, it, it, you know, like I can't, that's why I can't listen to every episode because it's, it's frustrating, you know, and, 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 you know, when he's talking to com- comedians, at least I could tolerate those people because usually I'm a fan of the people, the guests that he's have on, he's had on. So, you know, and then they're like, oh, you know, then then there was the revelations of all the times he's used the N word, and uh, you know, <laughs> and then they released that, and then like people were, and once again, I have friends that are that are diehard Joe Rogan supporters, and they're posting like, here's a picture of him interviewing Dave Chappelle and and Donald Ra- Donald Rawlings, and and that makes him no well first and foremost i mean dave Chappelle has been showing his true colors recently also dave Chappelle's, you know dave Chappelle's black but he's not <laughs> he's rich black you know dave Chappelle just recently uh fucking you know opposed uh f- affordable housing in his neighborhood uh 
he's 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 not the typical black guy and uh for him to, for them to say oh dave Chappelle's on the show yeah yeah one of the most famous black men on the planet yeah uh, okay you had one of his one of, you know you had him on the show and it's not like you're, you're it, it sounds like when people are trying to say hey i'm not racist i have a black friend <laughs> you know just because you've interviewed dave Chappelle and donald rollins yeah and it's also not forget that dave Chappelle is also a big name in the industry you know you're here you're you're going to get a bump in the numbers when you're interviewing david Chappelle. you know hopefully you'll get him to say some outlandish shit and it'll you know become a viral clip so you know saying oh he had dave Chappelle on the show is not a fucking argument saying that and don't be wrong i don't think joe rogan is a fucking flag burning nazi but you know he's had people on his show you know he's had people on the show that our members of the Proud Boys, or the leader, the leader, the leader of the Proud Boys, Gavin McGinnis, uh, you know, he's had guys that are part of like pretty much, you know, white supremacist uh, groups. And when when you're the one of the most popular podcasts on the planet, and you give someone with that notorious reputation a a a, a venue to reach millions of listeners, you're sort of legitimizing them. You're you're, so, you're sort of saying, oh, me talking to this guy is 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 He's okay in my book. And, and I think I said it in the past, like, you know, Joe Rogan, like, you know, pers- some people say the most outlandish shit and Joe Rogan doesn't really, uh, push back unless it's something that he stands for. Like, you know, and, you know, someone pushes back against, against Ivermectin, then he'll want to, you know, and, you know, he always tells the, his, his assistant to Google this and Google that. And yeah. And if you look, you know, if you Google hard enough, you will find, you know, your views all over the place, you know, and, and so it's just, it, it you know, blows my mind that, you know, and once again, I don't think he's a flag burning racist, but, you know, he's certainly in that, you know, white cis male <laughs> group where, you know, that that, you know, maybe, you know, he shouldn't have used the fucking N word and, and and he should fucking, you know, and, and he did. Yeah, he did ap- apologize. But, you know, like, I, I think he apologized just because he doesn't want to fuck with that Spotify money because, you know, they even had that. um that uh the white uh, they're not a white supremacist you know the, you know the a libertarian group or whatever you know like oh we'll give you all this money you just come over to our platform and he said no why he said no because he knows that platform isn't going to last all these all these all these big uh platform all these platforms that are trying to come out after like trump was banned from twitter all these all these uh you know quote-unquote libertarian sites and free speech sites uh are all they all crumble after a while and 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 not and trust me it's not that you know you know not that i love twitter or not that i love facebook or anything like that but you know you need a little fucking balance you can't ha- it can't be the wild wild west and all those fucking sites crumble so he he know he he's smart enough to know let me shut up let me apologize let me let them take down 70 of my episodes of the bullshit that i said uh, so it doesn't uh, no. you know so i can cl- keep collecting that fucking nice fat should, spotify check they should just take down all of it but you know yeah yeah I mean, it, it's, it, you know, it's kind of, how do I put this? It, it's, you're kind of giving people a, like, what am I trying, what's the word I'm looking for? Freedom to do whatever they want mm-hmm. kind of thing. So when you sit there and go, oh, I'm not going to take down all your episodes, even though what you said was fucked up and yeah, you should be punished. I, I mean, I get it. You you spent what, like, how much did they pay him? Like, Oh, I have no idea. I was, it was like it was hundreds of millions of dollars, I think. Yeah, like a hundred million dollars or something. So, I mean, uh, do I get it? Yeah, I get it. You know, I I understand that Spotify doesn't want to break an investment that they made a hundred million dollars on. It's the same thing with Dave Chappelle. You know, Dave Chappelle. I mean, you know, you he can sit there and, and complain about its cancel culture, its cancel culture, its cancel culture, but. You know, you are kind of canceling yourself when you sit there and say some of the shit that you say. You know, comedy only goes so far. Yeah. And, you know, and the reason I compare both of them is you can't say that you can't really say right now that a white dude's only doing it when a black dude's doing it, too. I mean, they're doing it in different ways. And, you know, it it's the same thing that Netflix, the reason why Netflix is in the, the situation they're in, too, is because... You know, they just sit there and go, oh, well, Dave Chappelle is Dave Chappelle. Well, that that's nice, but, you know, you shouldn't be condoning what he says, you know, yeah. or at least censoring what he's saying. Like, take it out of the, the Netflix special, something. 
Yeah. I mean, they like, got to do something. They, they, they sign these people up for these jillion dollar deals. And it's like, I, I want to say, you know, in this, in the sports, in the sports industry, you know, like the professional sports, you know, they have like a, a morality clause where it's sort of like, you know, mm-hmm. we're giving you all this money, but you know, if you get fo- caught cheating on your wife or, you know, you get caught, you know, breaking the law or some shit like that or, or, you know, doing something dangerous, we can, we can pull this contract at any time. And then of course, look, not that, you know, obviously, you know, drunk driving your car or beating your wife is not as serious as, you know, saying that you don't believe that, you know, tr- a trans woman, you know, you, sh- you shouldn't recognize a trans woman as a woman right. because you still have a dick or some shit like that. Um, you know, obviously those two aren't the same, but it should be sort of like, you know, we have this contract with you, but we can't spank you any, you know, like, you know, we do have the right to, to pull your shit, um, because, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna take the heat, you know, because I'm, you know, when you have, when, you, and, and of course, you know, a guy like, Joe Rogan or, or Dave Chappelle, I'm pretty sure they have enough power. Like, you know, you, I'm not going to let you have the power to pull my fucking, because I could go elsewhere. But they, you have to understand that, it's, you know, that you're, you're, you're putting your company, you're putting these companies, yeah, you're putting these companies at risk. You're, you're putting a fucking target on them because you want to show how fucking, uh, you know, controversial you can be or whatever. Well, look at, look at what happened as a result of Joe Rogan opening his mouth in the wrong way. Like they lost artists that were doing a lot of listens on Spotify. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to understand, like there are, there are other artists out there that will step up and say, listen, take my shit off of your platform. If you're going to allow this shit, you know, I mean, that's why some, you know, I'll record a tsunami people podcast and joke about when I'm saying like, Oh, you should hear us on Spotify. And, you know, like, because, you know, it's, it's, you know, to have your podcast on something that, you know, they're not really taking things seriously kind of makes you go, do I really want it here? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. But at the same time, I don't know. I just I just wish famous people would be a little bit more, a little bit more like, no, not a little bit. Not That's not what I want to say. I want to say more responsible, like being more of an example of. This is what you should do, and this is what you shouldn't do. Not, oh, I don't think that masks and vaccines don't do anything. Like if you don't, if you don't believe in that, that's fine. Just don't open your mouth. Yeah, what's well, it's you know when you when you get to those levels, so many people are kissing your ass that you just you oh lose touch you lose touch with all reality, and now you're 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 spreading misinformation because yeah. you're, because nobody nobody in your circle is willing to tell you, hey man, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> yeah, and and you know it, it's kind of like. It's kind of like um, NFTs, you know, mm-hmm. like, I'll be honest with you, I haven't really done any of the research because I really haven't cared enough to do it. But mm-hmm. I'm not going to go out there and be like, oh, yeah, this should be an NFT. This should be an NFT. No, I haven't done the research, so I don't have an opinion on it because I need to do the research first, because that's the type of person that I've always said that I am. And that's, you know, what I continue to be right now. Do I agree that there is a, a type of cancel culture out there that just goes way too far and doesn't do it to the right people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but does it happen to everyone? No. And it should, there's certain people out there that it should happen to. And, you know, you know, it is what it is, but it's like, it's like Aaron Rodgers gets pissed because he gets canceled. Well, you got canceled because you opened your mouth and we're stupid, yeah. you know? And, and, you know, it seems, I mean, seems like from this week, from what I've been hearing, he's maybe was going through some stuff and maybe that's why he opened his mouth and whatever. But still, you, you gotta, you gotta, like, in this world of, you know, stupid shit, like, just be cognizant of what you say. Because if you don't and you say the wrong thing, people are gonna start doing the same thing that you do. And then now, I mean, look, it's what, we're into year two almost three of, of, of COVID <laughs> like, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things. Like if people would just shut the fuck up and say the right things, we wouldn't be in this situation. So, yeah, <laughs> I know I kind of jumped around there, but it, it's all the same right now. It's all the fucking same. And that it just, it's ridiculous. And that's Joe. Go on. Go ahead. Ahead. No, I was just, no, it's, like, it, it's like, okay, like, you know, you already got all this fucking money. Like, yeah, you could have had, I mean, you know, look, you know, I'm not saying to be this way, but you could have had softball fucking interviews for the rest of your fucking career. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's not that, you know, 
you know, you know, you could have had, you know, do interview fucking Brad Pitt. Interview, you know, do interview goofy fucking celebrities. Interview your comedian friends, or, you know, whatever. But I just, you know, mm-hmm. I, I find it funny that Joe sat there and went up on stage and fucked with Carlos Mencia. And mm-hmm. now all that karma is coming back to fucking bite his head, bite yeah. him in the ass. <laughs> because, you know, I always thought that was so fucked up of him to do. Like he, like he was, he's the type of person that just went up on stage. Oh, you're, you're stealing this joke from this comedian, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If he is stealing that joke from somebody else. Okay, fine. But that doesn't mean you go up in the middle of a set and start being a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, (laughs) Joe has done some stupid shit and it's all coming back to him right now, you know? And I mean, I'm sure he'll survive it. He's a white dude. Of course he's going to survive it. It is as stupid as that sounds. Unfortunately, it is the way it is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's cultivated his audience, and and he'll, right. like, you know, he'll never have to work a real job for the rest of his life. And it, and but, it, it reminds me of like it reminds me of like fucking Howard Stern. Like yeah. I love Howard Stern. I, I I I've loved Howard Stern since I was a kid or whatever, and 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 I've listened to him, and 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 I have so many great memories in the past of of, of you know that's the whole I I wouldn't be doing a podcast for for Howard Stern. And now when you will listen to Howard Stern now he's gotten so he spent years attacking people and being the most rudest guy in the industry and and and, and all the shit. And now that he's getting older, he's gotten so fucking soft, you know, and he wants everyone to like him and he wants to he wants to fix his image, you know, and it's like dude, you spent 30 40 years being the biggest scumbag on the planet and now you know that it is kind of it is karma coming back to you it is and yeah and that, not that fucking howard stern's crying for money or anything like that but you know that shit eventually catches up to you you can't be you can't be that you can't be the fucking you know that guy <laughs> you know one of you the, know people are just honestly chris it's, it's just people are tired of all the bullshit they're just tired of hearing insert person said this insert person said that this happened, this happened, blah, 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 COVID this, COVID that. And, you know, when somebody like Joe Rogan says that, it's just like, dude, you got paid a hundred million dollars to just sit there and talk and not be stupid. Mm-hmm. Why in the fuck would you jeopardize that? And I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that because why would you jeopardize money? Easy money, easy fucking money for something that me and you are doing right now. Mm-hmm. Easy fucking money. Dude, just just put put two strangers one podcast in instead. We'll we'll take your fucking hundred million dollars. I'll I'll tell Chris to shut up and not be fucking controversial. You know, hell, I'll 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 have Darrell beat him over the head every time he fucking does it, and I'll make it a fucking skit. Shit, I don't care. But you know, I mean, in all seriousness, like you, you're getting paid all this fucking money. Shut the fuck up and just talk. You know, I, I look, I don't I don't mind if you bring like you were saying earlier, I don't mind if you bring people on for different perspectives. But when you do it in a logical way, OK, I have this I have this person on saying this perspective. Now I'm going to bring somebody on on the same podcast, kind of like how like a Fox News or a CNN or something. They would have different proposing, you know, opposing people mm-hmm. on a segment like you can do that. And that's the way you should do it, so that there's you sit there and have perspective, so people aren't sitting here going, "Are you a fucking secret KKK member?" Like, <laughs> you know, so or are you a QAnon fan or whatever it is, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, I think we've beaten this to the beaten this enough tonight, but you know, it, it's just I'm tired of it, dude. I'm, yeah, I, that's why I don't watch new much. I mean, yeah, you 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 joke about like I was watching CNN just now, but. I haven't really watched CNN that much. You know how much I used to watch CNN a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm just tired of it. Man. Yeah, it's. I mean, you know, and, and you know, one last thing I just, you know, and I already said it kind of is, you know, when you listen to the show, once again, I I watch the episodes where he's interviewing comedians and he'll bring the conversation back to fucking COVID. And it's like, dude, talk to the comedians about comedian shit. <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna talk about life on the road. Talk about talk about your wives. Talk about your dogs. Yeah. Talk about you know the fucking airplane food. You know, the the, the, the he's like. He, he has this fucking bug up his ass about talking about COVID. It's like, dude, fucking relax. You know, it's not, you know, you, you know, talk about goofy shit. Do your stupid fucking show. And, you know, dude, it's bad enough that I have that people that were walking into my store were getting pissed when I told them to put a mask on. Like, you know, it, it's it's bad enough that I have to deal with that shit. I don't want to have somebody bring up COVID every two seconds. You know, yeah. I want us. St- I really just want people to do what they fucking need to do so we can get back to 
quote unquote normal because I'm tired. I'm tired of all the bitching. I'm tired of all the whining. I'm tired of all the oh, you know, COVID this, COVID that. I'm like, oh my god, just just shut the fuck up and just just no, just go, just go. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, I, just, and that's why I'm looking for a job from home because I don't want to fucking have to deal with that shit. I haven't. That's why a lot of people are doing that, dude. Nobody wants to deal with other people. I, you know, I, I'm. In a sense, I don't have to deal at my job right now. I don't have to deal with people like I'm sometimes I'm the only one working in the store. And that's great because I don't have to deal with other people. I don't have to fucking deal with whiny ass little 18 year olds that sit there and go, oh, you offended me. Oh, shut the fuck up. You know, (laughs) just because you can't take a comment or you get offended by something that has nothing, nothing to do with you or is a joke like you know, I, I just I get sick of it, man. People just need to, you know, take their take their little grandma pants, pull them down a little bit, so that way, you know, and be open to things because everything's okay. Everything's okay, you know. Yeah. So. And like last night, uh, I went to I went to a show. I went to go see uh, Tom Segura. He's, a, he's he's he has a pretty popular podcast himself, and and. He's a comedian, and and you know, it's, coincidentally, he's like one of the guys that I would watch on Joe Rogan. Like Tom Segura, kind of got his big push from Joe Rogan, and that's why he's that's why he is what he and it's and he has his he does a podcast called Your Mom's House with uh with his wife Christina Pajinski, P- P- and then like then he has his like he has like his own podcast that he does with his buddy called Two Bears One Cave, and then his wife has her own podcast called Where's My Mom's At, and you know he he has he has a pretty decent following, and like you know last night I went to see him in the Kodak Center here in Rochester and a full house, and uh, so I go to the show now you know he. Now, look, he's a celebrity. He has money and stuff like that. And, 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 and sometimes he'll tell stories and like, you know, you forget that this is a good fucking celebrity with money and shit like that. But, you know, he, he attracts kind of, you know, that it's an audience of like people. It's very middle, middle class, uh, people. So like basically I went to the show and it's all like, you know, fat guys with beards. <laughs> which is, which I mean, look, I am not, I can't throw stones, but you know, it, it's, people who are doing a lot better in life than me and, and you know they live well enough to be fat and you know i don't think it was i didn't i didn't think i saw one black person in the room to be honest with you and uh so i went out now um when you're buying the tickets for codex center and i was there a couple months ago because i also <laughs> I, I saw louis ck there also um you know uh, they put all these you know make sure you have your your card your covid card with you and you you have to mask up for the show and like I went now, all the employees are masked up, but they were not enforcing fucking masking rules, you know. And they, like they, it wasn't even like. And now I'm walking to the place, you know. I park my car, I'm walking to the place, and like look, yeah, okay, fine. I don't have any fucking money. Why am I going to the show? Well, I bought this ticket. I bought these tickets last year when they announced it. Now when money was when when money wasn't. Uh, when, you know, and, and trust me, I was trying to sell these fucking tickets. I was trying to, I was trying to see if I could sell them, but, uh, nobody either knew who Tom Skura was or, or, you know, and even, and I wasn't even trying to like make money on them. I was going to see if I could just make my money back, but I couldn't find anyone to really buy the tickets. So I said, fuck it. I, I, I'm going to go to the show anyway. Um, but you know, you, I'm walking to the venue and I park my car and I'm like, Jesus Christ, not a single fucking person's wearing a mask. And, and, and I would say, I mean, I don't know how big, uh, the Kodak Center is, but let's just say there's a thousand people in the room. You know, maybe eight people were wearing masks, and I was one of them. Because I, I see the crowd, and as I start getting closer to the place, you know, I put on, and I, I have like, um, and, and even my mask, it's not like a, I have, I have like a, what do they call those, um, you know, it's like made out of lycra. <laughs> Oh, like, like it's not even uh, it's it's not a traditional mask, and it's not like a proper M95 mask or whatever the case may be. But knock on wood, I, you know, I've I've yet to you know catch anything, no Omicron, no nothing, uh, which worries me because that means I'm going to get it sometime. You know, I will eventually get it. Um, but you know, I I wear my bullshit bogus mask, and I was like, and I'm you know, and you, you when you walk in the crowd, you look around, I'm like, Jesus Christ, not a single fucking person is wearing a mask in the show. And then like, it was these people that were like. You could tell they all kind of pre-gamed. Everyone kind of walked into that place. Everyone was kind of drinking and, and of course, plenty of beer. And, like, no, don't get me wrong. The show itself was fantastic. I enjoyed myself. I had a great time. You know, the, Tom Segura is a funny fucking dude. But, like, 
all the people around me getting up every two seconds to use the bathroom because everyone was fucking drinking and everyone, like I fucking I realized Jesus Christ and you know I haven't I'm okay I went to Comic Con fine but, you know Comic Con people tend to be a little more on the nerdy side a little more <laughs> following science you know these are sort of like working class people that I went to the show to and like you know like Jesus Christ you can't sit down for an hour and watch a fucking comedian tell jokes like you know everybody everyone's too busy everyone's too fucking drunk running to the bathroom every 10 seconds and you know it's one of those places where if one person gets up everyone has to get up on the row so the you know the person can get out it's you know those seats weren't made for Americans and um so like you know like I realize how much you know I hate people you know the fact that I walk into a big room full of people and you know eight people out of a thousand are wearing fucking masks and and you know, and it just, it's, there's, there's, there's like this selfishness to the whole fucking thing. You know, and I, I went to the show and, and luckily like the row that I was sitting in, like the guy to my right and his girlfriend, like they weren't going anywhere. They, they sat through the whole show and they seemed pretty chill. And it was a big dude. Thank God he didn't have to get up. But like the guy to my left, you know, got up like three times during the show. Once to buy beer and the other two times I'm assuming to go piss it out because he, you know, when you drink enough beer, you eventually have to <laughs> keep running to the bathroom because you, you broke the seal, you know, you're now, you know, you're now pissing out all the shit that you drank. And so, you know, it's like you said, yeah, I, 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 I fucking hate people. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I know I've, I live pretty much like a hermit and, and all I see is my daughter and, 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 you know, her brother and sister and, 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 and the father of her brother and sister. And I, I occasionally will spend time with friends and shit like that, but like, I, I don't go out and I, and I'm not around people and or I'll see people at the, at the plasma donation place, but I hate fucking people. And after going to that show that I, last night or whatever, it's sort of like, uh, it reminded me, yes, I hate fucking people. <laughs> I don't want to be around them. Um, so I think with that, we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc. 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Ah, necrophilia. Ah, ah, ah. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get out of it. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history up. doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch one. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Sion. And we're back. All right, Paul. Uh, a lot of stuff since the last episode to talk about. Um, surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Uh, well, I mean, I, f- I had this in the first part of the episode. We're going to do the nerdy news. We're going to talk about uh, nerdy news. But Valentine's Day came and went. I had no Valentine's as usual. Uh, but then again, you know, you have to, I guess you you have to leave the house if you want to meet people. <laughs> you know, I mean, I haven't been on the dating site in a minute. I, I did kind of, right around Valentine's Day, you kind of go back on the site just to see if there's anybody. But, you know, why do I get the fucking, me- like, okay, when it says, you know, someone's like your, someone's like, it lets you know, you know, someone's like your page. And you kind of go and you check them out. And it's like, you know, you see a girl and, and okay, and look, I'm no fucking Prince Charming. But then it's like their profile is, you you know, it, the profile, and it's like, I don't like filling these out. Like, that'll be, that'll be their profile. 
I don't like filling these out or something like that. And I'm like, oh, then why the fuck are you on the site? You know, you, you're already starting at a disadvantage that you're not the most attractive person in the world. At least show me that you have a fucking personality. So, you know, so when you, when you check the, the dating site, so I am trying, I am trying, but it's, it's just frustrating to have to deal with that shit. Um, but since the last, uh, last episode, besides all the nerdy shit, uh, I think one of the other big things was the Super Bowl halftime show. Which, you know, people of a certain age, <laughs> myself being one of them. And, you know, I, look, I'm not a hip hop fan. Uh, but, you know, being a, a child born in the 70s, raised in the 80s, high school in the 90s, you know, I certainly appreciated the halftime show. You know, I grew up, you know, right when like Snoop Dogg came out and Doggy Style, the CD Doggy Style came out. Um, that was, you know, my years in high school. And I think, you know, your years in high school really shape your, your musical tastes. And, and even though, like I said, I'm not a hip hop fan, you know, I know a bunch of Snoop Dogg classic tracks. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I recognize, uh, uh, Dr. Dre and, and, you know, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg were putting songs out together. You know, they, that was certainly a, a big, uh, that was big when I was in high school. Um, you know, of course, I recognize Eminem. I recognize Mary J. Blige. And then, uh, they had what, uh, Kendrick Lamar, who, look, you know, I, I recognize him as a, as a current, uh, hip hop person, but I couldn't, I couldn't pick up, pick out Kendrick Lamar in a fucking, <laughs> in a lineup. I could, if you, you know, you tell me to, you know, a room full of black guys, I couldn't tell you who Kendrick Lamar was. And I hate to sound like that by saying that. I sound racist by saying something like that, but you know, I don't know him. I, I couldn't name one of his songs. Um, it felt a little out of place to have him there, I guess, maybe because I think he was there because he's from Compton, if I'm not mistaken, or he's from he's from the West Coast. So I guess they said, OK, if we're having, you know, the, the big theme of that was sort of like West Coast, even though and it's weird because like the, the, the stage, uh, like when you looked from the top down, it was like a map of like compton and and i guess you know south central los angeles and it was sort of like this west coast thing but eminem's from michigan uh mary j blige is from the bronx 50 cents is from queens uh even though 50 cent was a surprise you know they were the the rumor was it was going to be uh tupac um but you know uh, you know it's funny for for what the theme i guess since dr dre and snoop dogg were like the biggest names the area there was sort of they went with that and play, you know with the la rams playing and shit like that and and oh what was it the the, the 49ers so i mean i guess they were they're from san francisco so you know you, you have this west coast west side sort of thing going on but once again like i said uh three of the people on that stage there were more people from, not from the west coast <laughs> You know, Eminem, uh, Mary J. Blige and, and, and 50 Cent are all from, you know, well, Eminem's from Midwest, uh, Michigan. And so, um, but I do have to say, I, I really enjoy the show. I mean, there's people, you know, it was so funny to, to, to like see people's reactions after it on, you know, some, you know, it's when you see people like, I hated it. And, and then, and it's not, I'm not certainly pointing the finger like, oh, if you hate the show, it means you're racist. But I mean, there, there were certainly those people, <laughs> you know, this is the worst fucking, you know, the same people that had an issue like two years ago when it was like Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Um, you know, they weren't going to like it if, you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, if Dr. Dre wore a fucking Make America Great Again hat, maybe they would have liked it. Um, but, uh, you know, for what it was, I, I enjoyed it. I think it was entertaining. It didn't, it, you know, there was that weird, uh, the Kendrick Lamar bit that looked like the, the bad guys from Meteor Man, <laughs> where it was all the guys with the blonde hair. Uh, that was sort of odd. You know, Mary J. Blige falling, collapsing on the floor, but that was, she was big. She had a lot of energy and, and, and and once again, I'm not a fan of Mary J. Blige's, but you know she she did her thing, and that seemed she seemed pretty entertaining. But the whole thing, all in all, was uh was it was a good show. I didn't really have, you know, and not that I said that the Kendrick Lamar was the lowest point because maybe because I'm not a fan of his, but you know guys dancing with cardboard boxes, I guess you know I mean it was different. I can give it that, but. That seems to be the only like lull, but you know, from start to finish, I mean, I was entertained. You know, it's not like you know, sometimes you watch a halftime show and like you know, you do, uh, this is time to go take a shit. <laughs> this is the time to go get a drink. Um, I was fully entertained during the half, all the way through. Like I said, maybe because I'm not familiar with Kendrick Lamar, that I, I don't know him and and you know, I can't name any of his songs, but I do recognize him. And if I'm not mistaken, he was all over the uh, Black Panther soundtracks. Maybe I should recognize him. Uh, that's just me. But um. 
you know, I enjoyed it and, and the halftime show, I mean, in, in the Super Bowl in general, you know, I, I, I'm not a big football fan either, but, uh, like the weeks following up to the Super Bowl, um, you know, I, once again, you know, like I mentioned before, like my daughter, my daughter's half brother and half sister, you know, their father, you know, which would be, you know, my, my baby mama's other baby daddy. <laughs> And I hate to say, I don't, and when I say that, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but he, me and him get along, oddly enough. Obviously, we have something in common. We were with the same woman. Uh, and uh, so, like, I would go to his house, and he's a big football fan. So he's watching football, and I, and I guess when he's watching it and he's into it, I can get into it because it's sort of like, you know, I, I, I have a perspective. So, you know, when I'm watching two sports teams that, like, I give two shits about, I can't watch the game because I don't have someone to root for, but I'm watching, seeing who he's rooting for. I'm like, okay, I can get into it. I could, you know, I'll go with this team. I'll go with that team. And, uh, but it was a good game, uh, for what it's worth. And, it, you know, back and forth and, you know, to, to you know, to the obviously you know, the best playing teams right now. And, you know, and, you know, even the following weeks, like when I went over to his house, you know, with my daughter spending time with her brother and sister, um, you know, he's watching the games and, and, you know, it was interesting to watch football. I mean, I, I, trust me, I'm not, I'm, they haven't, they didn't win a fan. I'm not about to start watching football every week, but, you know, it, it was the past couple of weeks of football were pretty interesting and, and the Super Bowl was come really to good. the dark side, Chris. <laughs> yeah, come and, to know. the dark side. And of course, you know, Rochester. And the whole thing is that like, you know, last year, two years ago, I bought a Bills hoodie. And not that I bought it, I didn't go out specifically saying I'm going to buy a Bills hoodie. There was a, a Bills, I, you know, I get, I, I'm a big guy. I get my clothes at a, at a, a Burlington Coat Factory. <laughs> you know, they, they sell clothes and they have a big Shocker. renter. And, uh, you know, they, I bought a Bills uh, hoodie mm-hmm. and it's a nice hoodie. It looks cool. And when I wear it, it's so funny how people like, you know, total strangers will talk to you about football. And it's, and it's funny. I feel like one of those people, I get mad at people who wear jerseys for, for, for bands that they don't listen to. <laughs> like, you know, like when, you know, like the, you know, the younger kids now are wearing like, you know, they're wearing 80s style heavy metal, uh, t-shirts, you know, and, and they're pretty famous now. And you'll see, you know, see like this young kid in the street wearing like a Metallica shirt and like, dude, you fucking couldn't name three Metallica songs if I put a gun to your head. Um, so I kind of, I guess, I, I'm not trying to be a poser. I'm not pretending to be. But since, you know, we live up here and, and Buffalo's, you know, Buffalo's an hour away. I mean, but wearing Buffalo stuff is sort of the thing. So I wear it just to kind of fit in, blend in a little bit. But it's so funny when people are like, oh, how about those bills? How about, you know, how about that, that Allen? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, keep the faith. <laughs> you know, I try to bullshit my way through a, like a half-assed conversation with a stranger. Uh, just to, you know, you know, I don't want to say, I don't want I just bought this because, you know, we live near Buffalo. <laughs> but, um, I'm not trying to be a poser, but it is funny when I, when I, when I wear my Bills jersey and, and be like, go Bills! It's so funny. Um, okay, so what else? And then during this, now mind you, I missed, I missed the initial broadcast commercial because I, I was running late because I obviously they played this commercial right before the, the, anth- the, the singing of the national anthem, so I wasn't, in front of the TV when it happened, but I guess the big one of the the biggest news so far uh, for for us would be the multiverse of madness Doctor Strange fucking trailer, which was holy shit. Uh, for, for you know all these people, they like they like to point fucking fingers at at Marvel. Oh, you guys are doing the same shit over and over again. It's the same movie, the same template. I mean, after Spider Man No Way Home, and now here with the multiverse of madness, it is proving that no, we don't have. <laughs> they aren't putting out the same movies over and over again. I- I really like that they're trying to combine every single like Marvel film that's ever been made into some of these other movies just to kind of make them make sense. It's it's really funny because I mean everybody's really seen the trailer by now. If you haven't, well, too bad. Spoiler. Um, I mean, Professor X is in it. Yeah, Patrick Stewart. So you know, it's it's very interesting that you know we're going to get. To have that part of it in, it's kind of funny because there, there were there were memes out there. Like for example, once when you know Spider Man, the the newest Spider Man came out, they they uh they had this meme out there where it's like, look, I'm I'm the first MCU movie now because Tobey Maguire had the first Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you know Patrick Stewart is um probably going to be in in the new Doctor Strange movie, mm-hmm. <laughs> now they have a meme where it's like. Look at me. I am the the the, the, the first MCU movie now, and, it, and it's it's funny because it's it's kind of true. Like they keep going back and forth. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really really excited for this one. I'm, you know, people are probably going to be like, why would you be excited for this? But the fact that Tom Cruise might be in it as Iron as Tony Stark Iron Man, mm-hmm. that's one thing I'm looking forward to because mm-hmm. if anybody knows like the backstory about who they were trying to get to play Tony's. Uh, Tony Stark in the first place, Tom Cruise is one of those people. Mm-hmm. And I was really, really like, oh shit, I want to see what Tom Cruise is going to be like as fucking. Because he, dude, he looked like him. Like, honestly. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong. I mean, obviously, Robert Downey Jr. did a great job, and I'm not going to discount what he did, but I would have loved to have seen Tom Cruise. And this is going to be great to see that. Yeah. And I think, and, it, I think they're, they're going to use the energy, they're going to use the way Tom Cruise was in Tropic Thunder. How he was this totally fucking ridiculous fucking character that no one was expecting to see Tom Cruise in that fucking movie, and he was great in it. And I know you, you, you when you when you had the scene where he's cursing out the guy over the phone, and you say that's me. But you know, I think Tom Cruise is going to have fun with this because this will, you know, I'm pretty sure it's a one shot deal. When you know, we're never going to see Tom Cruise oh, no. again. No. But but you know, even if it's just for that one scene, Disney's going to throw him a gigantic fucking paycheck. It's something that the fans wanted, you know, sort of like, you know, when, when No Way Home came out, you know, like the No Way Home, the fans kind of wanted it. They're going to throw him a giant check and everyone's going to fucking love Marvel because, you know, and is it, is I mean, it stupid? Is it not, is it not necessary? Let me, let, me, that- let me say this to you though, Chris, never say never, because if people really like that, they may end up doing some kind of like Marvel TV series of this Iron Man. I mean, you never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see them doing them because they want to establish the new Iron Man. But, um, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, it's pure fun. It's, it's yeah. this pure, you know, they're gonna give him a billion dollars for fucking two minutes of fucking screen time. Yeah, and we're all gonna love them for it. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, the, you know, obviously the, the, the people who are diehard comic fans will say that, you know, this is they're bringing the the characters with the this it's called the Illuminati. And, you know, the, the regular characters. And also, I wanted to say this about bringing in the X-Men uh, franchise. Well, one, Disney bought Fox, so we were waiting for the eventual bringing yeah. in of the X-Men. But also, Kevin Feige's, like, the first movies he's ever... I don't know if it was the first movies he's produced, but, like, his first major movie that he produced was those those first X-Men movies. You know, the the initial, you know, Hugh yeah. Jackman, Patrick Stewart, uh, you know. Hugh Jackman might be in it, too. I yeah. mean, there's that. Yeah, so... so um, and by the way, fuck you, Ryan Reynolds. We know you're in it. Yeah, well, he can't look, you know. They, they, Disney will fucking sniper his ass <laughs> if he says if he says anything. So he's he's doing well, they he's, doing, set up, and he's Andrew Garfielding the whole thing and saying you they know, got to set up the new the the next you know Deadpool anyway. So I mean you might as well. By the way, you had an opportunity to do that with fucking Spider Man. Why did you not fucking do it then? Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ! I just want to see. Listen, listen. I just want to see Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool stalking tom holland that's all i want to see that's all i want to see because i think that would be hilarious yeah. and i know tom holland would go <laughs> go would go with that as much as he possibly can which by the way tommy to mcguire might be in dr well, strange it's, just, it's sam raimi i mean you know it's sam raimi's directing yeah. it so i mean we're you know all signs point towards uh, toby mcguire being in it and 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 you know and toby mcguire kept his fucking mouth shut andrew garfield kept his fucking mouth shut and i'm pretty sure you know Ryan oh, by the way andrew garfield man you got to give that man the reward for like best fucking liar of the year <laughs> yeah and i mean i mean he lied to fucking emma stone like, come on come on <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, those, you know, Disney, you know, they'll, they will fucking go to your house and kill you. But, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it, it, I, I, you know, I love the idea that, you know, Kevin Feige and Sam Raimi, those are just pointing towards, you know, seeing X-Men, seeing Tobey Maguire's mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Um, other members of the, of the Illuminati, pro, prof, Mr. Mr. Fantastic. And I don't know if this will be the launching pad for seeing, um, uh, uh, John Krasinski, or I mean, they could technically bring in the guy who played, you know, the 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 two Fantastic Four movies, you know, with Jessica Alba as as you know, they could bring him that doc that fantastic that guy from Fantastic. Please do, Four. Jesus Christ, don't bring the other one, please do. Yeah, I don't, I don't I, listen. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I actually do this like that. The the the, the reboot. <laughs> I hate the I hate the reboot. The original one, dude, mm. beautiful. Beautiful. It was great. It's not the best movie, but it's it's fun. And the Fantastic Four was always fun. Yeah. So 
That's why I like that movie. The second one, eh, we don't talk about that. Yeah. One. But, you know. I mean, yeah. Though, and look, you get that guy for fucking 20 bucks. <laughs> it's not like he's making other fucking movies. So I'm pretty sure if they asked him, he would fucking, you know, he'd, oh, I would. he'd blow fucking uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin Feige for letting you know him be really in that funny? movie. <clears throat> you, can't, you can't do, um, it's Johnny Storm, right? Johnny Storm. Yeah, you couldn't. You could. Yeah, you couldn't be Johnny Storm because it's. Yeah, you couldn't be Johnny Storm because he's fucking. <laughs> but I'm saying. Well, it, I mean, actually, technically, he could because that's a different variant. So. Yeah, and technically, like in the Loki yeah. show, it was the same actor playing different versions. So you could technically have him. But I mean, just having Mister Fantastic in general, because then you'd recognize those movies. You know, the, mm-hmm. those are being those are Fox movies also. Um, uh, and then um, another another member of the of the Illuminati is this character called Black Bolt. Now. You know, remember a couple, like two, three years back, they put out that movie called Inhumans. That was supposed to be a series. Like it was supposed to start out as a movie, then turn into a TV show. And a lot of people hated it. And they said it was garbage. It was stupid. But that being said, Marvel has a way of bringing, of taking shit that kind of failed. Like in Endgame, they sort of, Endgame sort of helped fix Thor 2. Where like when Thor sees his mother and shit like that. And like, uh, characters like, uh, you know, people really didn't give a sh- people really honestly didn't give a shit about Scarlet Witch until WandaVision. And 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 even like um I mean Loki the the you know, Loki was 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 good and, and people love Loki. But you know, you even take a character like, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, which people were kind of like lukewarm on, but you give them their own show and all of a sudden, you know, they're they're stars. So I think like I said, the character Black Bolt from the Inhumans, which was a movie everyone fucking hated, but you kind of you put him in this movie and you kind of give that you give him a chance to revamp it you know so i think i think i think we're going to see black bolt uh cuz he 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 technically already exists in this universe and and they'll you know change a couple things and and fix a couple things but you know they, they they'll probably re- revive the whole inhumans uh movie after this once they have black bolt in it um the other two members um are not going to be difficult but the other two members are uh, namor uh which if I'm not mistaken, is technically going to be introduced in the next Black Panther movie because I believe it's called like Black Panther: The Two Kings, meaning King, King of Atlantis, Namor, and uh, King, you know, King uh, T'Challa, uh, you know, uh, you know, Black Panther. So depending on how they, what you know, what they're going to do with Black Panther, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to have Namor in this. It would be it would be a ballsy move to throw him in it because then it kind of introduces us to him. Um, and then, and then also this, and just Black Panther in general. Black Panther is also a member of the of the Illuminati and the Marvel comics. So, um, I don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, you know, if they're going to have Black, I mean, you know, there was a time where Wesley Snipes was, you know, <laughs> considered to be playing Black Panther. I mean, of course, you know, it would be weird because you know people see him as Blade, but you know, uh, that would be. I mean, that's just a, a far reach or whatever. But uh, so those are the technical members. So. You know, it looks good. Uh, Multiverse of Madness. They're bringing in Wanda, the whole Wanda Vision angle. You know, where like she's like, oh, you know, you fucked with reality, and and you're the, you know, I fucked with reality. I'm a villain. You fucked with reality. You know, you're the hero. Uh, that's an interesting angle to go with. They're both witches. Um, oh, I think a lot of people were speculating that another member of the Illuminati was uh, Baron Mordo. For the bad guy from the first Doctor Strange movie, which only makes sense. And you know, and when they end Doctor Strange, when Doctor Strange one ends, the post credit scene or the end of the movie, he goes, "No more wizards." And he, like, you know, he he doesn't want people using magic. Well, you know, the whole series of WandaVision was about a, a woman who abused her magic and and took a fucking whole town hostage and shit like that. So, you know, he would have an issue with Wanda also. So, him saying no wizards, you know. Uh, here you got two people who fucked with reality, Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, and here's a guy who's against magic. Boom. <laughs> you know, it makes total sense to have, uh, Baron Mordo. So maybe instead of Namor or Black Panther, they'll have, uh, Baron Mordo and, and he'll be part of the Illuminati, which makes totally, totally fits in, uh, with where they left him off in, in end of Doctor Strange 1. And, uh, alright, so that's all I have to say about that. Uh, Book of Boba Fett came and went. Um, the show got a lot of fucking flack from people. People hated this show. Holy shit. I enjoyed it. I really much, it was kind of weird spoilers that the last two episodes are pretty much just 
new episodes of the Mandalorian. <laughs> Like, like, like the 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 second to last episode, they told there was like Boba Fett wasn't even in the episode, <laughs> and it was a whole Mandalorian episode. And then he then then the still the last episode of Book of Boba Fett was the Mandalorian was in like half the episode, and then it finally came back to the the storyline that they were doing with Book of Boba Fett. Um, you know, then you know people didn't like the whole first couple episodes where he was like part of the the sand people, the Tuscan Raiders, and he was part of that tribe and all this other shit. And people fucking hated the show. And and I dug it. Was it a little unusual? Unusual? Yeah, it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. But you know, it sounds weird. And I, and I wasn't one of those people that like sucked fucking Boba Fett's dick. Like, oh, he's he's the greatest, coolest character in the world, or whatever. I, I wasn't one of those people. So maybe since my expectations were low, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, you know, it it, it, it I. You know, maybe because I wasn't expecting much, I was happy with what I got. Um, you know, I like Robert Rodriguez I, when he works with John Favreau. You know, John Favreau, I believe, wrote all the episodes, and then like you know, Robert Rodriguez, um, or if he didn't write all the episodes, he certainly wrote a majority of them. And uh, Robert Rodriguez directed a majority of them, uh, if not all of them. I could be wrong. No, I no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he he directed a majority of them because one of them was also uh, what's his face? Uh, what's her face? The the girl. Um, Oh my goodness. Her father was, uh, Opie Cunningham. <laughs> Whatever. Her father was, uh, uh, oh my god. The guy who direct, eventually ended up directing Solo. Um, I can't believe I'm drawing up my page. Uh, Bryce, Bryce Dallas Page? Or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, she directed an episode. But, you know, like, and the, like, and everyone made a big fucking deal about one of the characters that they added to the, you know, they added this whole, like, biker gang group of, kids that they called the mods and they're like kids in their early 20s or late teens and they all have uh, modifications they all kind of have like half cybernetic bodies and so the guy does he does a shot and he does this very f- flaring spinning shot where he spins around to shoot his gun and people lost their fucking minds over this stupid scene that i didn't care i thought it was cool it was fun it was and i saw it and, I, and it left my mind and then i looked on twitter and everyone was fucking losing their minds over this stupid fucking three second spin shot and only because you know robert rodriguez has character his characters do that a lot in his movies but i mean like is that really what you you know is this this is the hill you're gonna fucking die on that, that that you think that's a stupid idea and of course you know i've died on a lot of stupid hills but like i really enjoy the show and and people fucking hated it and and i guess that's why they called it the book of boba fett you know they don't have to do a season two you know i think they kind of left it in a place where if they wanted to do season two they could they certainly could they don't have to they can have boba fett kind of exist and, and and you know and we'll see him could have and then you know spoilers they had ahsoka in the show they had uh luke skywalker the same way they had luke skywalker in the mandalorian <clears throat> and uh but obviously this 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 version of Luke Skywalker looked a lot better because there was a guy like there was a guy on the internet who said uh, that the that the Mandalorian when they had Luke Skywalker looked like shit and like he did it better on his computer. So then like Disney said, okay, fine, we'll hire you. <laughs> they, they hired the guy who did like he did a better deep fake online on YouTube and they said, okay, you can do it better, fine. Here's 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 a nice fat paycheck. Uh, do it for us. So uh, Luke looked really good. The voice was a little odd, but I they said that they didn't even get Mark Hamill. Uh, to do the voice they took they took a computer from years you know from 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 the 70s there was the star wars uh radio play that was big in england and stuff like that and they have it's basically luke telling the whole story of star wars so they have hours and hours and hours of uh luke hamill uh, mark hamill's uh voice recordings and so like they could have this particular Luke pretty much say anything they, they they need him to say because they have hours of Mark Hamill's voice recorded. And I think, I think of course, they threw him a check also, but like you know, he he sold his soul to fucking Disney, so um, they could do whatever the fuck they want. Um, so the voice did sound a little odd, but you know, I liked what they did with him, and and it was good to see Ahsoka. And uh, you know, while we're in while we're on that page, you know, they've announced the the Ob- I mean, we knew the Obi Wan Kenobi show was coming, but now they kind of gave us a. A date March 25th. I mean, excuse me, May 25th, um, which coincidentally is the 45th anniversary of Star Wars. It would be 45 years to the day uh, of May 25th. It came out in 1977, which I was born a month later. <laughs> so, um, 
I always make when I when I was younger, I used to make old people feel older. I said, "Do you remember when Star Wars came out?" And they go, "Yeah." And I said, "I was born a month later." Um, so uh, they're doing the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Um, you know, uh, I'm interesting to I'm interested to see what they're doing. I mean, you know, I think everyone could agree that he was the best part of the prequel trilogy. No, I don't think nobody had any issues with him playing Obi Wan Kenobi. He is an older guy now, so you know he can play. I mean, but then again, he's older, but I mean, he's gonna play. I guess after the Clone Wars, after the prequel movies, but before Episode Four. So I mean, there's a lot of uh, shit they could do. I know a lot of people. Oh, they're gonna bring uh, Darth Maul, but they kind of address that in the Clone Wars. So I don't think I don't think we're gonna see Darth Maul in the show. Or if we see Darth Maul, it's not gonna be them fighting. Or it'll be you know maybe he'll be in it, but he's they're obviously they're not gonna obviously can't fight to the death because then we see the death scene later on in uh, Clone Wars or not Clone Wars. Uh, is it Clone Wars or or is it the other one? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm not I'm not ho- holding my breath on seeing Darth Maul in the, in the Obi Wan Kenobi show. <coughs> um. Okay. The other big uh, the other big show that was making the rounds that uh, I'm going to withdraw now that it's over with. You know, I went to withdraw once Book of Boba Fett ended, and I'm going to withdraw through uh, Peacemaker, which you know, based off you know the second uh you know not not Suicide Squad the Suicide Squad. Uh, starring uh, John Cena, carrying his own show, you know, and and uh, you know, it being a show made from you know James Gunn, the same guy who gave us the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, uh, Slither, Super. Um, he wrote the first two Scooby Doo. <laughs> he wrote the, the live action Scooby Doo movies. The, he wrote the Belko Experiment. He wrote uh, Brightburn. You know, he, he he's a writer and a director and stuff like that. You know, and of course, you know, The Suicide Squad was a good flick, also. So uh, having a TV show based out of that uh, universe, which technically is involved, you know, and I guess, and we'll uh, spoiler, 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 um, in the finale, you know, because it's it's a whole conspiracy about these aliens that are trying to take over the world, and you know, someone throws the joke out there, you know, like wouldn't this be a job for the Justice League? And so. Um, with uh, you know the peacemaker, you know they 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 end the episode. He saves the day, and they stop the aliens, and then and then the Justice League show up. With that being said, they actually had uh, Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller show up and play uh, you know uh, uh, Aquaman and uh, the Flash, <laughs> and they had people there that looked like Henry Cavill. But it wasn't Henry Cavill, which reminds me of Shazam, because that's you know exactly what they did in Shazam. They had a they had a body double, where like you just didn't see his face. Um, they had a woman, they had, they had someone there, who, and and all these people are like the stunt the stunt men for these characters. So it's the guy who's done Henry Cavill stunts. Um, uh, uh, the woman has done uh, Gal Gadot's stunts for Wonder Woman, and then but the big controversy was no Batman, no Cyborg, and. Uh, a lot of controversy over that. Now, I haven't gotten the official story because I was looking for it, and I do listen to Kevin Smith's uh, Fat Man Beyond podcast, and he said that James Gunn did address it and saying that he wanted them there. They filmed the scenes with, okay, maybe it wasn't uh, Ben Affleck and, 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 and Ray Fisher, but there were silhouettes of Batman and Cyborg there, but they weren't, uh, WB had them removed from had them erased from from the episode so um i mean obviously the art the bits with ray fisher it's because ray fisher is refusing to work with wb you know he's saying that the warner brothers that he, he doesn't like what they are doing and and, and doesn't like where they're with the, like even though his issues were joss whedon his like was like well the people that hired joss whedon should be taken into account for also and um and then Ben Affleck, I think, just with um, with the new Batman movie coming out in a month, you know, and, and Ben since Ben Affleck is not coming back as the Batman, or at least not expected to come back anytime soon, um, that's sort of all up in the air on on what they're going to do with Batman. But it just it was kind of kicking the nuts when you go like, oh, it's the Justice League, but it's just you know Superman, Aquaman, Flash, and Wonder Woman. And so, uh, and the funny thing is when you watch the scene, you see the way they're positioned, and you could see where cyborg and batman would have been standing <laughs> like they left those spaces empty and i wonder if he did that on purpose so like people could understand like look i wanted them there but here's the spaces where they would have been standing um and then the weird and uh, the one cool thing or, or is that um the the scene i guess it was sort of like you know they 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 it was like a last minute thing for them to get the justice league into the into the show so ezra miller's part of the flash was actually filmed on stage 
where they're filming the fucking next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Like, Ezra Miller went to where they're filming Guardians of the Galaxy, and they filmed his parts there, and then sent the footage over to DC so DC can, can work with it. So that's a weird... And once again, I guess money's money, and, and you know, for a fucking, you know, 30-second part of a show... You know, it's not like it's going to ruffle too many feathers, but that it was actually he was actually filmed. And then, you know, uh, uh, Jason Momoa is already in. He's already, he's filming Aquaman 2 now. So them getting him was like, you know, he's already there on set, <laughs> you know, throw a green screen behind him and, and, and record his, you know, his two lines for the for the Peacemaker finale. The show was good. I, 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 it's funny that I'm surprised people aren't talking more about how that show actually showed a woman's pussy. <laughs> um you know, not that you could see it all clearly and shit like that, but it was like, you know, they're swiping through like a, a tablet and, and and it's a woman's pussy on, on a fucking comic book show. I think it's the first time we've ever seen a pussy in a comic book uh, franchise. Um, but it was pretty good. John Cena was really good. Um, uh, who was the other guy? Uh, the guy that plays um, uh, the uh, Steve Agee, the guy who plays Economos. I, 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 you know, I loved him. I've loved him ever since uh, I saw him on the uh, the Sarah Silverman show. And uh, so, you know, it's good to see him. I feel kind of bad because they called him uh, Dye Beard. And being a guy who does dye his beard, <laughs> you know, in the, in the last episode where he saw or the second to last episode or one of those episodes where he talks about why he he dyes his beard. It sort of broke my heart. I'm like, I, I get it, man. I get it. So uh, and no shame in my game. I know I dye my beard. I know sometimes it's gray. Sometimes it's dark brown. Um, so that's sort of, you know. And don't worry, I love Steve Agee, so it's good to see him. And then, you know, for the people who don't know, you know, he, not only was he in the Suicide Squad movie as uh, the character that he is Economos in the show, but he was the motion capture guy for King Shark. You know, they got Sylvester Stallone to do the voice, but they weren't going to get Sylvester Stallone to fucking walk around in a goofy fucking, you know, uh, 3D motion capture suit for, for King Shark. So they got Steve Agee to do it. And Steve Agee's a big fucking dude, so um, it worked out perfectly. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else? Uh, the after Peacemaker, the Pam and Tommy show on Hulu. Um, if you if you have Hulu, you have to watch this fucking show. Uh, it is certainly a what's the word? It's a time capsule of shit that's been was going on in the nineties. Uh, with uh, yeah, it was ninety six when it came out. If I'm not mistaken, the sex tape release and stuff like that, and about the guys who. Who stole the tape from Tommy Lee and, and 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 putting it out? The I think the the girl that plays fucking Pamela Anderson, it it is ridiculously act. It is so freaky to see how. Now it's funny when you see the actress herself. Now don't get me wrong, she's in incredible shape, but um, uh, Pamela Anderson has much bigger tits than this actress does. And the funny thing is they show her tits in the show. <laughs> they you know they have they have nude scenes in this TV show. But it turns out that it's they put fake prosthetic tits on top of her tits. So technically she's being nude, but she's not nude. She, they're looking, we're looking at big fake prosthetic uh, uh, Pamela Anderson tits, but it's not really her tits. So she can, you know, you can have. Even though I think she's she's done nude scenes in movies before, but uh, when they show her tits, it's they're not her tits. Um, and the funny thing is, the last episode that just came out shows like a flashback of when before Pamela Anderson got her implants, talking about getting implants where they had the actress just be herself. Um, and then I think the funniest thing of that show, and I guess spoiler, is that there's a scene where Tommy Lee's dick and Tommy Lee, guy who played fucking Sebastian Stan, the guy who played the Winter Soldier, uh, Tommy Lee's dick is talking to Tommy Lee. <laughs> Tommy Lee in a weird fantasy scene. So the show is so weird. I mean, and it has um, Seth Rogen. It has um, what's his face uh, from from the, the Parks and Recreation, um, Nick Offerman, and and you know these two guys and and how they released the tape and and it's like you know it's this real. I mean, they play a lot of songs from the '90s, and they reference a lot of. I mean, you know, it's that time in the '90s when people didn't even know what the fuck the internet was, and like, you know, who's gonna go to who's gonna go on the internet to watch porn when all the video everyone had VHS tapes and and stuff like that, even DVDs, or or actually no, before DVDs, but you know, like people were like, you know, who's gonna go to the internet for porn? What kind of nerd is gonna do that? <laughs> it's so funny to see stuff like that. Um, so the Pam and Tommy show, Pam and Tommy is really good on Hulu. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Okay. Uh, friends of the show, Megas XLR. You know, we've talked about in the past plenty of times where Megas XLR, 
one of the great cartoons, Cartoon Network, early Toonami, 2004, 2002, 2004, around that time, came out. And part of the reason that show is in the legal lim- legal limbo that it's in is that uh, Cartoon Network, for tax reasons, wrote off the show. So uh, as for the time being, we're not going to see any kind of resurgence to it because, you know, t- uh, for, for Cartoon Network to continue writing off the show, it's all good. But then again, in the international versions of Cartoon Network, you can clearly see they still have Megas XLR sometime or somewhere in their lineup. Well, HBO Max or the, the HBO Max, HBO Max slash LA, like the, the Latin American version of HBO Max clearly has brought back Megas XL. I mean, not brought back, but is, you know, you can watch old episodes in, in as good as quality as you can. Uh, and I, I, you know, I know there's our Jose Argumento, the whatever I see him. I don't know if he's trying to get the episodes up to 4k. I, I follow him on Twitter and he, he works. And so I don't know what his deal with is with trying to get Megas XLR and 4k. I don't know if that's signs of things to come in the future or it's just a project that he's working on. But um, if you have HBO Max in Latin America, South America, uh, you can watch Megas XLR and all as, glor- as well as you can watch it, uh, seeing that they never actually have released an official like DVD box set or anything like that. Um, and I I was trying to see if I can I was trying to see I, like I, I try to hook up a VPN, but you know, I was only using free VPNs and and all the free countries that I can. Look it up. I can't get to Latin. None of the countries in the free versions go to Latin America, you know, South America, Central Central America. So I haven't had a chance to prove it, but I, I've seen enough people uh, on Twitter post uh, screen grabs that Megas XLR is indeed on HBO Max in South America, Central America. Um, Jackass Forever. I, I haven't. I, I wanted to go to the theater to see it. I just, you know. Once again, I hate crowds. I guess maybe now that it's been about been out for about two weeks, I probably can go out to go see it. Um, uh, I guess you know one of the things they're doing in this movie, they're sort of like passing the torch to these younger guys. There's like this big fat fat guy with glasses, and there's other this black guy, whatever. Which you know they kind of did need to to fill some of the spaces because you know Ryan Dunn has passed away, rest in peace. And you know um, you know the fact that they didn't bring back Bam Margera. You know, it's such it's such a weird concept that you know they have jackass, they have guys doing stupid things, risking their lives, doing all this shit, and then Bam Margera because he has a an issue with substance abuse and being a, a, a junkie for the lack of a better term, they won't bring him back. So it's like, you know, oh, you know, we want you to risk your life and and throw yourself off a fucking mountain, uh, but if you're if you're taking pills, all of a sudden <laughs> that's the problem. Um, and I get it. They want him to, to get his shit in order because, you know, Ryan Dunn, when he died in his accident, it was because it was he was smashed out of his head and he was he shouldn't have been behind the wheel of a car. Um, so, you know, I, I see why they're doing it, but it just it's sort of like this weird, ironic thing. I know Steve-O is right now doing a tour uh, of the United States and, and he's sort of doing like he's saying, like, here's things that what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, I'm doing a tour and here's things you can't see on Jackass because they're illegal. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And so, uh, it's so weird, you know, like Sivo, which I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad for his health and stuff like that, but like, you know, he's clean and sober, but he's, he's doing illegal things and filming it. Uh, so, you know, you can still make money, but it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so weird when people draw that line where like drugs are the issue. And, and don't get me wrong, it sends a good message. I don't want to let kids think it's okay to, you know, it's not okay to pop pills. It's not okay to do heroin. It's not okay to smoke crack or you know do absorbent amounts of cocaine and shit like that. So, um, let me see what else. What else do I got here? The Bob's Burger movie. Do we really need a Bob's Burger? <laughs> and I shouldn't say that because friend of the show actually works on Bob's Burgers, and I think they also work on the Great North or the you know, and it's, they're all under the same umbrella. Um, but they're doing a Bob's Burger movie. It just reminds me of like when they did like. The Simpsons movie where it's sort of like, did we really need a movie for a show that's still on TV and, and does weekly episodes, you know, when, when the, when the seasons are, are up? And so, and, and I don't want to, you know, not, I, not that I don't like Bob's Burgers, but it, it is one of those fucking shows where like, you kind of have to shut off your brain. You can't use logic and, you know, and oh my God, speaking of, I came across 
there's a show called Smiling Friends, which I guess I, I caught it. I know it's on Cartoon Network or, or it's on Adult Swim, but I catch it on, uh, I've caught it on HBO Max and I thought I was going to fucking hate it. I was like, this is one of those stupid fucking shows that makes no sense. And, um, because yeah, in HBO Max, there's this other one, um, euthanasia something teenage euthanasia which i started watching and it was basically kind of telling the st- story of anna nicole smith where it's like a girl who married for money and now she's dead and they use black magic and she's back as a zombie that show was just so fucking stupid it, it, you know now don't be wrong i would i would work for the company in a heartbeat if i had a chance to, to make a cartoon with them uh but like that show is so fucking stupid and i thought i was gonna hate smiling friends and right out the gate and it's very weird and and it, it, it reminds me of, um, I want to say regular show, where they, they kind of use different versions. Not regular show, what's the other one? The one with the goldfish and the cat. Um, it's, it's one of those shows where they use mixed media, where like you'll have 2D characters and then they have 3D characters and, and they'll switch up animation styles and stuff like that, or they'll have characters that are obviously animated in a different style than the main characters. And, um, it's this weird mishmash, but it's, it's so, I mean, yeah, don't be wrong. You have to turn off your brain to watch the show, but it was, I, I was, I was on my ass laughing, uh, smiling friends. And I would say in my last bit of nerdy news, Stranger Things, they've announced, uh, season four. Season four is going to be broken up into two parts. Uh, we're going to get some earlier this year. I want to say May and then later on this year in November, if I'm not mistaken. Or right, so it's going to be interesting because Stranger Things Season 4 takes place in Russia, if you don't remember how Season 3 ended. So that's going to be interesting to see what they do with, um, you know, <laughs> seeing that the, the world is is, is, is set, on, set on fire uh, with Russia being the aggressor. Uh, what are we going to do with uh, Stranger Things Season 4 taking place in Russia? And they did announce that Season 5 will be the last season. And these guys take so much time in between episodes. Like, they're not kids anymore. They're fucking... <laughs> They're grown ass adults with fucking, you know, with with with, ki- with kids of their own now, and we're supposed to still believe that it's still the 1980s. Uh, you know, the show started even if they were like, you know, 12 or 13 in the first episodes. You know, <laughs> years later now they're they're 25, 26, trying to play 15 year olds. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, even the girl like Millie Bobby Brown just turned 18. Uh, not that I'm keeping track of that. <laughs> it was on my Twitter though. Um, so. Uh, and then, like I said, and I do like the idea that they, at least they know they're putting a cap on it. The season five is going to be over with, so at least they can answer all the questions. Um, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of season three, but it was okay. Um, you know, I love season two, like season one. So hopefully if they know they're going to put an end on it, they'll give us some of the answers we've been waiting for and what's the under, upside down and where did that come from. And, um, I think that's it. Um, I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> I think we're having tef- technical difficulties on Paul's end of the show. So I think I will say, let's wrap this up. That's what she said. Uh, please visit two strangers one podcast.com dot net where you can find all things show related. You can find links to our iTunes page. If you have an iPhone, iPad, iPod, you can subscribe to us there. If you don't have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod, you can find us on the Stitch app. That's S T I T C H E R. The Stitch app for Google devices. Um, you can subscribe to us there. That's what I li- I do. I listen to um, all my podcasts on the Stitcher app. I mean, I have a shitty phone, so it's not, it, it, for some reason I like the app, but it's sort of like if you leave the app for two seconds and come back, it kind of it goes to this whole like refreshing thing. And I don't know if it's maybe because my phone's a piece of shit, um, but that's a little frustrating. Like if I just left the app to go look at something else and I come back, it shouldn't have to refresh everything. So just leave me where I was. Um, so uh, if you don't have uh, so you can find us on Stitcher. If you don't have any of those, you can go right to the source. Go right to SoundCloud. So search for Two Strangers Little Podcast. I make episodes available for download. Uh, for any of the new listeners, uh, in April, we'll be celebrating our 10-year anniversary uh, of Two Strangers One Podcast. So uh, what I've been doing recently, I've been uploading a lot of episodes to YouTube. You know, because, you know, right now you can get episodes on, on SoundCloud, but we had, you know, up to, up to a point, all our other episodes were on another service called Podomatic. We're not using them anymore. And so, uh, to keep them saved somewhere, you can find all the older episodes on YouTube, along with, uh, my audiobook, How'd I See a Tale from the Road, with my music that I make. I make electronic music under the name XLNYC, um, my stranger vlogs, 
um, all those things you can find on our YouTube page. Just search for Two Strangers One Podcast. And so, you know, I bring that up when you visit SoundCloud because, you know, what if one day we stop using SoundCloud? Uh, we'll have our stuff backed up. And absolutely, but you know, to take a audio file, make it into a video file, it takes a while to get that done on your computer, and you got to upload it, and you got to put all the notes and shit like that. So I am working on it. Uh, but you can find all of that on YouTube. Um, if you want to write to us, you can write to us at two strangers one podcast at gmail dot com. I know some are out there. Oscar's is living his life or whatever, but super fan Oscar. He hasn't. I, I looked it up today. He hasn't written the show since like March of last year. Is he even alive? <sighs> I don't know. I, I mean, I, technically we're friends on Facebook, but um, he hasn't. Uh, you know. You know. I don't. I don't think I've interacted with him. Yeah, I haven't interacted with him since like I said, since March of last year. Uh, oh no, maybe he fucking caught COVID and died. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let me see. Um, we want your money. We need your money. But until we set up a Patreon, uh, you can share and like us on Facebook, uh, just facebook.com slash two strangers little podcast and check us out there. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I might have missed. Um, and of course, like I said, on Stitcher, we do have, uh, the Stitcher app. We can find all the podcasts to listen to and you can find Paul's other baby, the Tsunami Faithful podcast on Stitcher. Um, I think I've, I've said everything I needed to say. I acquiesce the floor to you, sir. All right. And you can find me on Twitter at Paul Pascrillo. You can email me, Paul Pascrillo, at TunamiFaithful.com. And uh, as usual, like he said, you can hear me on the Tunami Faithful podcast. And that's, uh, you know, that's about it. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed listening. Had as much fun as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. You should be fapping. I wonder if I could do that for s- <laughs> to make some money. So my sperm. Right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want you Double it? jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. And punny. But... <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialistic I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I know, I, I know. Oh, fucking... Are you oh, sure God. I didn't write this? <laughs> uh, I, I smell sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively... So, sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in Lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her, fucking. She's impressed. I am. Summer. She got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like. Hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up. Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, And if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www. 
L U L U dot com. That's Lulu dot com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it that spells it. Still, Lulu dot com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www dot Lulu dot com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is fifteen dollars, and a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars is yeah. insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard for a paperback version. No, this is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on, come! I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I and will his totally book, read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. That's, how is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.